Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and I wanted to do a different type of video today. There's been a lot of talk amongst Guns N' Roses fans about the wilderness years. Some people refer to it as those years between 1994 and 2000 when Axel was pretty much out of the public spotlight. People don't really know what he was up to. Of course he was working on a new album, but there really aren't a lot of photos of him, so I want to go through what photos are available online and share some photos that maybe you guys haven't seen before and provide some context to them. So, 1993 Guns N' Roses get off the road. They put out the estranged video. Axel's involved with the Steven Adler lawsuit, and then he's also involved with the fan that he punched at the St. Louis riot in 1991. Now, what you guys may not know is that there's actually footage of Axel being interviewed after the trial. This is the last footage that I know that exists of Axel Rose from 1993. Here's the footage. And at the close to the last minute or, or something, uh, it was accepted and that would have to be enforced and so we're fine about it. I walked over to the table and all the news media people were around him and uh, I just kind of cut, rudely kind of cut through, you know, excuse me, excuse me. And Fast forward now to 1994, it's January and Axel is in New York City to induct Elton John into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Also during the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony, Axel joins Bruce Springsteen for a version of the Beatles song Come Together. At the same time, Axel's also spotted with guest jeans model Jennifer Driver, who also appears in the Since I Don't Have You video. Now we're going to fast forward to the random pictures that Axel's been photographed in over the next 3-4 years. And you're going to see a constant theme of Axel with the same guy named Santi Dorazio. I hope I'm saying his name right. But he basically, he's a photographer friend of Axel's. They go back to the user illusion days at least. He's photographed uh, Axel for a number of magazines. He also photographed Stephanie Seymour back in the 90s when her and Axel were an item. So the photos you guys see right now, these are not from the wilderness years, but these are some more rare Axel photos from the Use Your Illusion period. Uh, this one photo in particular is from Venice, Italy in 1993. Guns were playing Italy and Axel took a day trip to Venice. This other photo is from I think 1991 or 1992. It's with the same guy, photographer friend of Axel's. And then this is from 2016. Even after all these years, him and Axel are still friends. That's a photographer friend on the left-hand side. So let's go back to the wilderness years starting in 1994. This is Axel in March of 1994 with uh, the same photographer friend. There's no context given as to where this photo was taken, but I want to thank the guys from the MyGNR forums who sort of put this together. So during late 93, early 94-ish, Axel found some time to help out Gilby Clark on his solo record Pawn Shop Guitars. He sang on the song Dead Flowers, and these are some photos of Axel in the studio with Gilby. Now around this time, Guns N' Roses shoot the video for Since I Don't Have You from the Spaghetti Incident. These are some candid shots taken from the set of the music video. So this one was taken around the same time. This is from 1993-ish, 1994. You can tell by the Charles Manson shirt that Axel's wearing. And some people are saying that the guy in this photo is Dave Lank who helped co-write the song Don't Damn Me. Now Axel references Dave Lank from a backstage video that's in the late 80s. Here's what Axel had to say about Dave Lank. Hey guys, this is my oldest friend in the world. We grew up together. We're two halves of the same person. Two halves, man. Twin sons of different mothers. And you know that this band played at my club like three and a half years ago. But like next Fast forward a couple months now. This is an article that appeared in May of 1994. Somebody translated it through Google and the article basically talks about Axel's new girlfriend. So this is at a private party in Miami, Florida. Now we don't see Axel for a couple months, but then it's October of 1994. Guns N' Roses are getting in the studio to record Sympathy for the Devil. And Axel has a Halloween party, which he typically did every year. So this first photo you guys have probably seen in Craig Doeswalt's book. He was Axel's personal assistant. And Axel always talked about dressing up as a year of corn. Now this is from the same party. This is Axel with Dizzy Reed's daughter. You'll notice that Axel in both photos is wearing a jersey, which makes me believe that the second photo is from October of 1994 as well. 
So this next photo is from February 6, 1995, Axel's birthday. And this is with a fan who just happened to come across Axel and Axel was nice enough to take a photo with her. You can see in this photo that Axel's looking a bit more heavier and his uh, hair is not as long as it used to be on the Use Your Illusion Tour, so it's cut a bit shorter. The next month, it's Betta's birthday. And this is a photo with Axel, Fernando, and Betta and her family. And you can see that this was actually taken off Instagram. It was a throwback Thursday that Betta did. And Axel looks pretty good in this one. And he looks similar to what he did on the Use Your Illusion tour. And there was all these rumors at the time that Axel had grown fat, bald, and strange. But it looks like he's been living a pretty normal life like a lot of people have. Now this next photo, some people believe is from the 90s. The date stamp on the photo is unfortunately cut off, but it's definitely from the 90s. Some people think it's from the mid 90s. This is just a photo of Axel sleeping on a plane uh, that somebody took. And uh, I'm not even sure if this is 100% Axel. I'm 99% sure it is. This next photo, I'm not exactly sure when it was taken, but this was at a guitar show that Axel showed up at. This one appeared on Instagram. I'm not sure who originally posted it, but you can see that Axel lost some of his goatee. His hair is still pretty short. And this is another photo that Axel took with a fan at the same guitar show. Notice the same bandana color, the same t-shirt. He looks a bit better in this photo compared to the first one. This next photo is from the same year in 1995. Some people think this is with Santa de Rosio's kid, but it's not confirmed or not. These next several photos were taken over the span of a couple days. So this one is from October 28th, 1995. And this other one is from the same day. Notice Axel's t-shirt. He's wearing the exact same t-shirt. The photo after this is from his Halloween party in 1995. So these two guys are Axel's friends. One of them posted this photo on Instagram as like a throwback Thursday. You guys will note here how short Axel's hair is. It's even like chin length compared to some of the previous photos where it's a bit longer. Fast forward a couple months now. This is December of 1995. Notice that Axel's hair is even shorter. And this is a photo that appeared in Metal Edge magazine at the time. And this is a photo that's supposedly taken with Yoda, who Axel had a pretty good friendship with and who guided him in making life decisions. This is a photo of Axel from April of 1996. Axel goes to a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert and is photographed backstage. You notice how he's grown a beard, his face is looking a bit fuller. And this was the only photo that we've ever seen of Axel from 1996. Although Slash gave an interview just before he left the band where he talked about how Axel was doing. With Axel these days, is, is he ready, you know, to, to come back? He's healthy. <laughs> and he's ready? No, he's fine. I mean, we really haven't gotten to the, the point. I mean, for, first things first is to do an album and finish that and, and then the touring plans come later. Now this photo is thought to have been taken in 1997 by the same uh, photographer friend of Axel's as I showed earlier and around this time there was a lot of rumors going on about Axel, where is he, why has he made a public appearance. Courtney Love claimed that he was losing his hair and that's why he's not making a public appearance but producer Moby worked with the band for a couple weeks and he had this to say about Axel. He said Axel's always worn a hat when I've been around him. I don't even know if he has long hair anymore. He has a band that's clearly, he has a beard that's clearly not groomed. If you passed him on the street, you wouldn't stop and say, oh, there goes one of the most successful rock stars on the planet. And by this time, Guns N' Roses was composed of Axel Duff, Paul Hughie, Robin Fink, Matt Sorum, and Dizzy Reed. Here's a report from MTV in 1997 talking about Axel becoming reclusive. First upon the scene with its Appetite for Destruction album, and it's been six years since the group released its last hit album, the double CD, Use Your Illusion. During that period, Guns was probably the biggest hard rock band in the world. Since then, however, frontman Axel Rose, who legally owns the rights to the group's name, has divested himself of former bandmates, including songwriter Izzy Stradlin and guitarist Slash. Rose has apparently been holed up in his Los Angeles home, keeping a very low profile. When Abby Kearse set out to get an update on Rose, she let her fingers do the walking. It's been some time since we've heard from W. Axel Rose. No more news reports of concert riots, arrests, controversial lyrics, or duets with Elton John. So we decided it'd be a good time to make some phone calls to find out what Axel's been up to. And just so that everybody knows out there, Jerry, you do Metal Edge magazine, which I have here somewhere, your magazine. And I know that, you know, this is your thing. So what's been some of... He's, he's a recluse. I mean, <laughs> I haven't even seen the guy. You haven't seen him anywhere? No, I, I live in L.A. I w I've lived here for four years. I've n not run into him once. He doesn't go out. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. 
So we've got Tommy Lee on the phone. So now, Tommy, what do you? What's your take on on why Axel has kind of just, you know, in a sense, you know, disappeared from at least from you know from the public eye? Um, you know, I don't really know. I I, uh, I would imagine that you know he's maybe avoiding going through some of the some of the painful things that we've actually been through. Well, what do you mean uh, some of the painful things that you had been through as far as... When you, re when you release a record and, uh, you know, it's just a different time and there's a whole new wave of music and it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of changes took, took place. Yeah. Maybe Axel's got his, you know, storm, win storm windows up and they're all boarded up and he's waiting until it, you know, passes. <laughs> It's been almost, I believe, with us for MTV News, it's been about five years since we actually talked to him. So that's a long time to kind of be out of the, you know, uh, limelight, so to say. So in that five years, um, what are some of the things he's been doing? He's just been enjoying life? Well, he's been doing a lot of reading uh, and also learning new instrumentation. He's been learning to play guitar. Is this album, in a sense, a solo project since mostly all of the original uh, members of the band, Guns N' Roses, are apparently not going to be on this album? Mm, I wouldn't assume that. Is there going to be a Guns N' Roses album? You know, like say before the year 2000. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like we're coming on the world's most frequently asked question. <laughs> um, but all I can tell you is there will be an album when Axel says it's done. Rose is now working with techno star Moby, although they haven't started recording yet. He's also said to be putting together a new experimental Guns N' Roses lineup that will include original bassist Duff McKagan. Apparently, Rose does get out of the house once in a while, as he was recently spotted at a Radiohead concert in Los Angeles. Fast forward now to 1998. This is the first public photo that's come out of Axel in almost four years. He's at the Phoenix airport. He causes a ruckus with one of the security guards going through the airport screeners and he is arrested for disturbing the peace. Axel was visiting Yoda in Sedona, Arizona and she'd given him a crystal that he was worried about breaking possibly going through the airport screener and he got into an argument and he was promptly arrested. So these photos are from the year 2000. Gilby Clark is playing with his band, the Star Fuckers, and Axel shows up. And I kind of wonder if this was like un unannounced and just Gilby happened to be there. So Axel joins them on stage to sing a couple songs, mostly just Rolling Stones covers. And that was basically when we started seeing more of Axel. You notice he's wearing the jersey. He'd wear a lot of jerseys in 2002 during that tour. And then these are some random photos that I'm not sure exactly which years they're from. Like this first photo, some people claim is from 96. Others say it's maybe 98 or 97. This other photo of Axel in the yellow shorts is from Easter Island 2001. And I'm not going to go into any more photos from 2001. There's tons of photos online of Axel in Brazil taking photos with fans when he was in Chile as well. So you guys may be wondering, has Axel ever really talked about what he was up to during the reclusive period? Well, and he talked about during 95, he was involved with the lawsuits with Stephanie Seymour and Aaron Everly, so he showed up for some of those trials. Um, he talked about writing a song called Oklahoma when he was uh, taking a break, when they were basically on recess during the Aaron Everly trial. And uh, then uh, he did an interview in 2002 where he talked about what he was really up to during those years where he wasn't in the public eye. He wasn't necessarily as reclusive as people thought he was. Here's what he had to say. I guess uh, I guess the big question is, where have you been? Where has Axl Rose been for the last uh, 10 years? What have you been doing? Just uh, mellowing out, getting stuff ready to go? or I mean, No, I just basically I just don't go looking to, you know, promote myself on 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 every little thing until there's some kind of product and we've been you know there's something to put out that that i think's worth it and and we've been working on this band and trying to get things right for a long time and uh if i go to like do interviews or anything like that it just gets turned around by so many people around the world who don't have anything better to do than to try to shoot anything down mm -hmm. and that was just too draining to deal with everybody else. It's interesting. In L.A., there's places that I go to all the time, and but since I did the MTV thing, I go to the same place, and suddenly there's paparazzi, mm. and it's like, Axel's out, and it's like, well, I was here last weekend, and right. you didn't care. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, uh -huh. I just wasn't going. Like, I used to live behind uh, Tower Records on Sunset, and I lived right behind Spago, and if you wanted to, you could 
go down and stand there and all the paparazzi would take your pictures and stuff you know it's just dependent on if, if you wanted to i mean i never did that um but you drove by it every day. I mean, mm. There's other people there that would purposely go there to have their photos taken. And stuff. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's not my world. You tried to uh, stay out of it. I was searching some uh, websites and I saw. Actually, I listened to an interview you did with uh, some DJ in like Chile, like last year or something yeah. like that. You've played a couple gigs here and there, but I mean, you've played some huge ones down in South America, if I'm not That's mistaken. True. That's some small ones here in, uh, in in the states in Vegas, eh? Yes. Well, you know, it's it's taken. You know, uh, th this band did not come together by. You know, a bunch of guys meeting each other in, in a bar or down on the, in the corner or in their old neighborhood or anything like that. So it's taken a you know a long time to pull these guys together and then have them develop a chemistry with themselves. When we first did our first show in Vegas, you know, Robin and, and Buckethead didn't know each other at all. Mm -hmm. And you've got two lead guitar players trying to kill each other. <laughs> Is that right? So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Were there any photos you guys hadn't seen before? Leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the like button and please share the video as well. You guys can also subscribe if you love GNR as much as I do. And you can follow us daily on GNRcentral.com to stay up to date on the latest Guns N' Roses news. We're really your number one source for all the Guns N' Roses related news, guys. Take care and have yourself a good one.